you guys, Sean C. Phillips here on that brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. They're going to go out to things going on today, see what things are on sale. I know the big releases today are, you know, Bad Mom's Christmas, uh, the new Batman animated film, and I know there's like exclusive editions of those ones, I think, at Target. But then there's also uh, Victor Crowley releasing today, uh, the Day of the Dead remake, uh, you know, Bloodlines, Day of the Dead Bloodlines. So like a bunch of different stuff, and Walmart should actually be changing out the actual section. So there should be in like a bunch of uh, indie horror movies and indie films and comedies and stuff like that they always change out the actual section of movies you know the first Tuesday of every month so definitely look forward to seeing you know what kind of stuff they got in there as well but there should be quite a few different things like I said coming out today and also though at the end of this video it's gonna be a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I got to you know review and talk about for you guys so be sure to definitely check out you know the reviews at this end of this video but anyway though guys let's get going and see what we can find today into Target we go. And like I was saying in Target, I believe they have like an exclusive edition here of like Gotham by Gaslight. I believe that's the proper name for the, uh, you know, the new Batman animated film. There should be like a steel book, I think, of that in here, but I might be wrong. And then I know um, there's some kind of edition here of Bad Mom's Christmas, and we'll see too if they're going to carry uh, Victor Crowley in the Day of the Dead, you know, one in here. And luckily enough, though, everything in here is out. Yeah, so their exclusive edition here of Bad Mom's Christmas is actually the only thing that's exclusive. This one it has like a $5 Target e-card in this one. But I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. A couple of these ones I'm going to be discussing at the end of this video. But that one's $22.99 here. And then, like I said, they have um, Batman Gotham by Gaslight here. And this is the only a Target steelbook. And I talked about this one last week. It's a pretty cool one set during the time. Um, you know, it's Batman's trying to track down Jack the Ripper who's going around killing people so it's set during the era of Jack the Ripper so definitely a very different kind of film and then this one released today this one only the brave which was about the uh, California firefighters going into this terrible fire this is not one that I was that interested in watching though because like things that deal with fire and stuff like that especially since I live in California always really you know creep me out and scare me so like I don't think I ever watched this one to be totally honest um, but this other one released today this Ethan Hawke movie which I talked about a little while back 24 hours hours to live this movie has sort of like a crank feel to it it's about him you know he has like a, he gets killed and gets brought back by these guys because they you know he has this kind of information he needs to tell them but you know right immediately after they bring him back they want to kill him so it's kind of him trying to track down the, this certain person but it was kind of cool like crazy like I said kind of crank vibe movie and then this movie released today this Woody Harrelson one here uh, LBJ, which I don't know much about this one. If you guys have seen this one, let me know how this is. That's only $12.99 for that. And they have uh, Bloodline here, Day of the Dead Bloodline, for $14.99. And I, I actually like this one. I'm going to be talking about this at the end. It's not perfect or anything, but I'll be talking about this one at the end, as well as this film here, uh, you know, starring Bill Skarsgård from the, you know, Place Pennywise in the new It film called Battle Creek. So those are the main ones, but they definitely did get a lot of things in here. But over here in the actual kids section, there's a few other things as well. Like this movie here called Stray, which I don't know what this one was. If you guys have seen this one, let me know as well. I always watch a lot of these kind of dog films. And then they had uh, the Woody Woodpecker movie. And this one only released on uh, DVD, and this was kind of ridiculous. I mean, it was kind of like sort of like that one, uh, Furry Vengeance. You know, a little bit like that, kind of like this crazy thing about Woody Woodpecker in the woods trying to like take his land back from this guy who wants to build a house on it. I mean, it's really, really silly. It's definitely more for kids, but it was kind of interesting to see, you know, a Woody Woodpecker like live action movie. But other than that, though, that seems to be all of the major new things I see in here today. But they did definitely get in quite a few new releases because usually at Target, I feel like they only get in a couple new things. I feel like this is the uh, biggest amount of like new titles I've seen them actually get get in at one time in a really long time though but they didn't carry at least as far as I could tell Victor Crowley so I don't think that might be a target at all I'm not sure but that one should be at um, you know at Walmart and Best Buy but we'll see though into Walmart we go and I've got to cross my fingers and hope they put out all the new stuff because like I said there should be a bunch of new stuff in here today as well in the actual set and over here though like I said you know big, uh, Bad Mom's Christmas one of the big things that one's on uh, 1996 so this one seems like it's like three dollars cheaper than this was at Target and they have Gotham Gasm by uh, you know Gotham by Gaslight for $24.99 for the 4k uh, they have only the brave here for $19.99 they have um, you know 24 hours to live here as well this is another one that released today this one called accident man and they have a uh, woody woodpecker 
which I showed in Target, this one, the Stray, and they actually have the Blu-ray of this one. Let me know if you, like I said, if you guys have seen this one, if this one's any good or not. Like I watch a lot of these kind of like dog films, and then this like Kirk Cameron thing here, uh, Relieve or Revive, you know, Revive Us and Revive Us Two. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and this one released too. I talked about this a little while back as well. This uh, Bella Thorne movie, which was filmed a couple years ago and is finally released, called Keep Watching. This was all like a found footage one about all these cameras in her house, her family's house, like, you know, watching them being like terrorized. I actually really like this one. This one, highly recommend you guys check that one out. And now let's head over to the section and hopefully it's all, you know, the new things are put out in here. But one of the things today that came out, you know, of course, was Victor uh, Crowley. And I, and I just watched this one last night, but I didn't get to get the review in this video. But I'll have a review of this one uh, next week. But really, really love this movie. Really, really highly recommend you guys check this out. This one here is missing, this one perfect day. But they have over here, I believe these ones were all last week, a lot last month. But they have Family Possessions, which released today, a Felissa Rose film, which I should be having a copy of this one soon to review. So I'll be, you know, be sure to look out for that review soon. This other one came out today called uh, Living Among Us. Which, you know, Brendan reviewed, you know, Brendan saw the, the screening of this one and said this one is really good. So uh, another one that I should have a review of this one soon. So really interested in seeing this. As well as this movie here called uh, House of Demons. Which is another one. I don't know a ton about this one. If you guys have seen any of these ones too, let me know, you know, your thoughts on them. And this Daniel Harris movie released, which I really like this. I mean, you've always been a fan of Daniel Harris, and this is called Inoperable. And it's like her waking up in this, you know, uh, hospital, and she keeps on, like, you know, she's in there trying to figure out what happened to her. She keeps on wandering around and then running into people and then, like, waking up again, doing the same thing again and again and again, trying to figure out how to get out of this hospital. But I really like this. This one was actually really pretty good. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that came out this week. I, and uh, other than that, though, in here, let me see what else is new i think this one may have been today cassidy red yeah i believe this one was today another one i don't know a ton about this one and then this one here called blame this release today another one and if you guys have seen this one let me know how this one was and i don't know if this was a lifetime movie or not on this and this is one and i only see the uh dvd of this one all i see is you starring blake lively and jason clark and this one, I, ha I need to read up on this one. And like I said, I've, oh, so many different things this week. So if you guys have seen any of these, let me know. This one, I believe, is this week here. Madtown, uh, you know, Walking Out came out today. And I'm going to be talking about this one at the end of this video. Reset came out today. This is, really was a huge week. Kill Order, this Eric Roberts film called Spreading Darkness released today. And then I think e even these ones up here are new too. Uh, Perfect Romance. And they have Battle Creek in here as well. So really was, like I said, a huge release week in here. So lots and lots of different stuff in here today. And this past weekend, the only movie that I saw was the film Winchester, which is based on the, you know, that real house that's like, you know, been considered like one of the most haunted houses in the world. And it's been a lot of those like ghost hunting shows. And it's like got like, like a couple hundred rooms in it. And it said like that the spirits and stuff of people that were killed with Winchester rifles and stuff are like trapped in the house and stuff. So it's a very like creepy house. And and stuff and they made you know the movie about like based in part about the story behind the house and the woman Mary Winchester who had the house and could communicate with spirits and stuff like that you know the reviews of the movie though have been pretty negative but honestly though it wasn't a perfect movie. The directors, you know, recently did the film Jake Saul. They did the film uh, Predestination, which is a really, really good movie, though. If you guys have never seen Predestination, highly recommend you guys check out that movie. Love that one. This one was okay. Uh, scare level, you know, it was a lot of jump scares. But there was one scare in this that for some reason, and I don't know why, and I don't know if any of you guys know, might know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to say where it is in the movie. But there's one scare in the movie that is like so, it works so well. I feel like you know everyone in the theater was like like you know I, I totally like, scared everyone like really bad and it was like I don't know why it was so you know such a creepy scare but it really did creep me out it's probably like one of the best scares in years this one scare in the movie it's kind of like the scare of the really tall character you see in uh it you know it follows that really creeped me out as well like one of the, that was one of the other last like super creepy things but the movie though like I said wasn't amazing or anything but I kind of did like it and it was a pretty cool story you know what was going on in it but 
but you know, and Helen Mirren did a really good job in it, but nothing amazing. If you guys did see that one, you know, let me know your thoughts on that, and you know, let me know below what movies that you guys saw this past weekend. Into Best Buy we go. But we're here now in the section though, and over there in the front though, they had like uh, the uh, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, and they had like the uh, you know exclusive edition here, and had some kind of like a graphic novel in that. Couldn't talk about it while I was over in the section because they were you know blasting music over there. But they had Victor Crowley over there for uh, you know 11.99. That one's the DVD and Blu-ray combo. But this one I had no clue was releasing. They only have, only have one copy of this. This one's 12.99. This is the Blood Feast remake. Like I said, I I didn't see this one in any other stores today or anything I didn't even you know I saw this on no DVD sites that this was releasing so I had no clue that this one was coming out today so that's pretty cool that this one came out like I said they have the blu-ray of that and that one's $12.99 I don't know if that's like now an exclusive you know release at Best Buy for you know this week or anything because I as far as I know like I said didn't see that one in any other stores at all today so anyway though guys, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I said, you know, lots of different stuff came out today and I had no clue that that Blood Feast one was releasing there today. I guess that could have been an exclusive for Best Buy or no one else had it or anything, but like I said, I didn't see that on any websites or anything whatsoever posting about that nowhere. So that was totally surprised seeing that in there. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for a bunch of new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got here from Arrow Video is the Herschel Gordon Lewis film. The Gruesome Twosome. This is a really fun, ridiculous movie. And if you guys know Herschel Gordon Lewis, you know he's considered the godfather of gore because he was one of the very, very first, if not the first person to be making these super gory, over the top violence, like crazy, like super, like and it's the most insane levels of gore you can think of, especially for the 60s. That kind of stuff was not going on at the time. And he was one of the very first person to start these kind of films and kind of make them popular. And kind of like it was all kind of other people making films like this as well at the time after he started started making them popular and this is basically though about this um, you know this woman who runs this wig shop and her son and she basically people who kind of come where they live to rent out the room local college girls all this kind of stuff the son ends up killing them and then scalping them and then they, you know they're selling the the hair as when turning it into wigs and selling them in the wig shop and it's just a really ridiculous wacky kind of movie and I love the opening credits because like the movie wasn't long enough so they had to make this opening of like these wig heads you know talking you know with wigs on the heads talking it's really ridiculous opening like really strangely filmed and everything it's just a really ridiculous movie this has on here though the high definition transfer on here it has um, archival uh, you know commentary tracks on here with Herschel Gordon Lewis it has a featurette on here talking about Florida filmmaking with you know uh, with, with director Her uh, Fred Owen Ray on here uh, trailers uh, radio spots but a really really great transfer on here as well for what they had to work with but a really really fun kind of I feel like lesser talked about Herschel Gordon Lewis film it also has on there a bonus film as well. This one here is from the Arrow Academy. Just to let you know this one is available. This is the Fellini film Orchestra Rehearsal. And this is done in a kind of a documentary style with this TV crew going to film this orchestra that's um, you know kind of rehearsing for this big show that they have. And it's like I said, it's done documentary style, and it's all. It was very early at the time too to be doing something like this, involving like something to, to make it seem like it's real. And it's kind of about them interviewing the people in the band that are, you know, or, as they're rehearsing and like the all the players and stuff, and and they and then they sort of things on the, you know, as they're filming it, sort kind of start falling apart. The orchestra, the head of the orchestra, starts to like have this meltdown and all these kind of problems, and all, there's all kinds of arguments and disagreements and problems and stuff. So it's it goes. To these kind of crazy levels of everything sort of falling apart while they're doing it. And if you know Fellini's films, they're always like amazing cinematography, so it's really, really well filmed. But it has on here, though, a brand new uh, 2K restoration of the film, as well as some featurettes on here. And it also has a booklet in here with some pictures and some facts and stuff about the making of the film here. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Shout Factories, uh, from Shout Factories, uh, you know, uh, Shout Factory line. And this one here is the film called uh, Walking Out. This is about a father and son going on this. This kid is basically hasn't seen his father for a long time. He lives out kind of in the middle of nowhere, and um, they haven't seen each other for a really long time. So he kind of flies in to see the father to go on this sort of hunt, you know hunting tr you know trip out into the wilderness, and it's like you know really snowy and everything and freezing out. So they go on this trip, and it kind of cuts back and forth too to them before and kind of like their kind of relationship. And you also see uh, the one's father, uh, you know the one kid. 
kids' dads. Uh, his father, played by uh, Bill Ponham and Ponham's character, and kind of their relationship. But it's essentially though about them going out into this this you know the you know to go hunting, and the kid really doesn't want to go there. He doesn't really want to do this. He's not really interested in the idea of hunting at all. But he really wants to see his father. Like I said, he hasn't seen him in a long time. They're trying to kind of get their relationship sort of figured out because they haven't really, like I said, haven't seen each other for a long time, and everything is a little weird between them because of that. And it's pretty much about them going out on this trip. But you know, though, you know, it's essentially though, some, they, they see this bear, and something ends up happening to the father, and it ends up basically putting a whole lot of pressure onto this kid. And it's sort of a survival film, sort of stuck out in the middle of nowhere, but actually pretty well done. Really good performances in here. The kid was from the, the movie Max. He was in a couple other things as well, but the movie about the dog, Max. This has on here, though, behind-the-scenes footage and a theatrical trailer on this one. The next one here, and this is one that I was really looking forward to seeing. This is from Lionsgate. And, you know, they made a remake of um, this film years back with Nick Cannon and Mira Sav Mina Savarni. And it was... It was okay. There was like some things about it, and they also made a part two. The same company that made uh, Creep Show three made uh, Day of the Dead part two. And as I remember, like there was like one or two aspects about that one that I kind of liked, but it was sort of like really strange. This one though. I think it's probably the best of the you know the remakes of this film because it's the, technically sort of the third and it's pretty much the second remake because this part two was kind of a weird thing. But this is Day of the Dead Bloodline and this is kind of um it has aspects of the original film but this is essentially though about the virus and it's about a medical student who ends up you know being in this medical building when the zombie outbreak happens and there's and it deals too with this one really weird um, kind of person who's like a comes into the medical offices to like have treatments and stuff and he's always hitting on her and stuff and he's sort of the bub character because essentially though what happens is when the medical outbreak happens it cuts to like a year or so later I think it's like a couple of years later and she's now in this army base and since she's a doctor who was a medical student she's there kind of helping people out in this kind of um, army bunker and it's sort of underground like in the original Day of the Dead sort of not it's like a similar kind of bunker but it's not really underground as much as more like um, like you can get to it. It's a little different the way it is, but essentially though, when they're in there, in this bunker, and she's kind of there, and they kind of have a, a character who's sort of like Captain Rhodes a little bit, kind of like the army guy who's like the head of the thing, and he's kind of giving her own problems and stuff. So he's a similar type of character. Every, they have similar characters, but none of it, like not exactly the same. But essentially, though, when they're in there, though, uh, the one girl that, that is like really sick, this one kid is sick, and they need to get medicine. So she ends up talking to them and saying, "Listen, if we go to where I went to medical school, we can get the supplies there. It's not that far away." They have the medicine there. This will help this girl get better. Otherwise, everyone in this whole facility is going to get sick with the flu and it could kill us all. So it becomes a whole thing about them going there. But when they go there, though, the weird... Uh, guy that she was treating at the medical offices that had a thing for her, the bub character, sees her, and then essentially it's about him trekking his way, getting his way back to the bunker, and then everything gets screwed up because he goes back, and that's kind of how they had the bub character in this. I don't know, I honestly liked aspects of this. I really did, and I liked it. It was very, it had similarnesses to the original film, but they really, really did try and make it very, very different. And the biggest, like I said, similarity is having the bub character, who's the smarter zombie and kind of hasn't fully turned over but like if you guys have seen this one though let me know what you thought about this one this has on here a featurette though about making you know reinventing the film but I, honestly though it was a lot better though than the Nick Cannon one which the Nick Cannon one I really didn't care for that much like there were some things about it always like Mina Savarni but that one just was not great I only ever really watched that one once this one I feel like I'd actually go back and look at again uh, the next one here from Lionsgate as well as the Julie Roberts, Owen Wilson, Jacob Tremsley, Tremsley film, uh, Wonder. Which I saw this one in theaters as well. This is the 4K edition of the film. I honestly, this is one of those movies though that you'll kind of cry to throughout the whole movie. It's a very, very touching, really, really well-made, sweet film. But also shows too how kind of mean some kids can be and how mean people can be. It's about this kid though who has a facial deformity and... He had been homeschooled for years, and but he really, really wants to go to regular school, and you know, they wants to kind of the parents really need think that he needs to kind of get out 
and kind of be around other kids. And it's not sort of healthy just him being at home. And they think that that would really help him. So it's kind of him going there and he wears this helmet on his head. But, you know, this, uh, you know, spaceman helmet. And it's pretty much, though, about him going to school. And then it's him seeing, though, how cruel and mean some kids and some people can be to him. But then it also shows how nice some kids can be and how some people are accepting and really nice to him. But then there's, like, of course, the bullies at the school. So it's him dealing with this. And it's all kind of um, a juggling thing between like what are they going to do if like because like because he really the kid wants to go to school but at the same time he doesn't because of some of the kids and he comes home and he's really upset because of it and it's it's a really really like I said really touching sweet film it was really really well done I really liked um, you know um, Julia Robinson Owen Wilson's characters and this is the parents this one honestly though was one I would definitely highly recommend I think that everyone really should definitely check this out like I said I honestly really love this movie it was one of my favorite films of 2017 but just go into it knowing it is a sad film 4k wise though looks great and like I always say the big thing with 4k is that you know the higher contrast levels and the brightness levels and that's the one of the big things that 4k really does is boost the brightness and the contrast levels and the color levels and all that kind of stuff is that's the big thing you see there's a whole bunch of different featurettes on here uh, behind the scenes features there's a music video a commentary track a music video on here a, a, a music video as well as the thing on here about the soundtrack is really good music on this one but one like I said highly recommend you like you know you guys check this one out Definitely, if you guys like really positive, sweet movies, definitely would highly recommend you guys check this one out here. The next one I got here from Lionsgate as well is the film The Ballad of Lefty Brown. This is from A24. And this is, you know, is Bill Pullum, Pullum really did a different kind of role in this, a really, really different kind of character that I've seen him play. And it's a Western film, though, about him. And he's kind of like a... Uh, an, sort of an officer kind of lawman man that kind of goes and gets bad guys and stuff and he works alongside Peter Fonda's, Fonda's character and right in the beginning of the movie though Peter Fonda's character ends up getting killed by somebody and you don't know who this is and you see him getting shot and uh, Bill Pullum's character it's like kind of his mission to figure out exactly who was it that killed his you know his boss who was like he worked for um, Peter Fonda and Peter Fonda too and them had been friends for years and worked together for years in this film his character and it's essentially though about him going and trying to get revenge and figuring out tracking down exactly who was it that was responsible for this happening and what was going on and what was this a planned out thing exactly what was happening here but a pretty like I said a very different he was playing a really really different kind of character and if you guys like western films this is definitely a serious kind of western because like there's been a lot of other kind of westerns like, like hostels and stuff like that but this one really has like an old school like classic like uh, western film kind of vibe to this one but it has on here though a uh, feature out on here about bringing the character to life and uh, talking about the look of Lefty Brown has a thing on a uh, commentary track on here with the director and actor Bill Pullum but like I said if you guys are a fan of westerns and kind of revenge type films and I guess like I said two really like classic old school kind of western vibe ones check this one out here this one here from Lionsgate, this one is, um, this is actually a sequel, but it's kind of a prequel, and I never saw the original film, it was, it was called Red Dog, but this one is called Red Dog, True Blue, this is an, um, an Australian film, it's essentially though about this, these kids that, you know, all, both, all really want to have this, want to have a dog, and they're always talking to their father, saying how they really want to get a dog, when, but they go to this movie to see the film Red Dog, and they're talking about that, and like how, like, they're watching the film, when they get out though, they're saying how they really, you know, it made them want a dog even more, and the dad was saying, you know, that dog in the film was actually based on my dog, and that was actually my life. So then he goes home and tells the kids the story about how this was this was actually based on his life and about how he ended up when he was younger having to leave his mother because something happened with his mother and she had to go away and he has to go stay I think with his with his grandfather and like it's a really different kind of life that he has to live because like he's from the city and he has to live out in the middle of the country and he doesn't know that kind of life and like the kind of stuff you have to do out there and all that kind of stuff and it's sort of about him finding this dog out there that was covered in paint and how he became friends with this dog and like how he had all these kind of adventures with the dog and everything. It's an interesting kind of like really like feel good kind of film here. Like I said, I hadn't seen the original movie, so I don't know too much about that one, but I had read a, like a lot of really positive reviews when I was looking it up. But this has on here though, um, some featurettes on here. It has deleted scenes with an alternate ending, a thing on here with the storyboards and a still gallery here. Uh, this one here from Lionsgate 
is a movie called Doomsday Device, and this stars in here, um, Cora Nemec, and it's basically, though, about this device that's, you know, um, this Asian device. I think it was from somewhere in Asia that is kind of a device where it's, like, can, um, control weather and, like, terrible type of, like, storms and stuff, and it ends up being, um, like it gets ends up getting stolen. This one woman has to go to try and like because they found this device after all these years, and she has to go to find you know to basically get the device back, and because she's kind of the protector of it. And then uh, Corin Emmerich and this other guy are basically like these agents, these FBI. I believe they were FBI agents. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I have two FBI agents, and they had to go, and they kind of got there at the same time because like because these guys were like criminals and stuff, so they went there to try and like figure out what was going on. But it's essentially though about them trying to. Uh, um, you know, track down this device and then stop this device because, like, if the device, you know, continues to be in the hands of this person that's got it, it's going to cause all this continued, like, havoc and all these kind of horrible, like, um, like I said, weather kind of storms and earthquakes and all kinds of stuff. So kind of an interesting kind of like, sort of like a geostorm kind of vibe for this one, but it's all about trying to track down this device to kind of keep from like the end of the world happening here. And I think this one might have been for Sci-Fi Channel, but I'm not 100% certain though. Uh, this one here is from Lionsgate as well. And this one is called, um, Do I Look Like an Hombre? Um, and this is actually from, uh, directed by Nicholas Lopez, who produced um, The Green Inferno, he did that other horror movie that I can't remember. I think it was like Aftermath or something like that, which was like a pretty cool horror movie um, as well. But I th And I think if they do Green Inferno 2, I believe he might be directing it. So hopefully they get to do a sequel to the Green Inferno. But it's, and it's actually a couple actors, too, from the Green Inferno acting in this. And it's a film, and it's basically, though, about these friends. And the one guy tells his friends, though, you know, and they always thought that he was this real straight guy. and had, He always had girlfriends and everything. And he comes out to them and says that he's gay. And then the, the friends are kind of like, well, what do you mean? You know, you've always had girlfriends. How can that be? And he's like, oh, no, I've always been gay. I just never knew how to say it. And I was kind of keeping it to myself and was kind of covering it up and dating women and stuff like that. But it's essentially, though, about them when they find out about this the one guy is like this can't be true and he's trying to figure out how to like anything he can to figure out that maybe this guy is just confused and he's straight and he's kind of coming up with schemes and stuff to kind of get to the bottom of the whole thing but a pretty fun like different kind of take on this type of a film about a coming out film and then about how the friends like deal with it and like the one like I said is trying to go and like make it like he maybe just be going through a phase and trying to figure out how he can change him and stuff and I actually kind of like this one a lot like I said this is directed by Nicholas Lopez, and I really like the stuff that he's produced and worked on in the past. Uh, the next one here is from Universal. This is the sequel to Bad Moms, and I actually... I didn't really love the first Bad Moms, but honestly though, this one, I you know this one to me was a lot more fun. Like I like this one a lot. I always like Christmas movies as well, and like this one had like a really good Christmas vibe. Like there's certain like kind of holiday kind of Christmas movies that you kind of feel like you go back and look at, like this one, Daddy's Home Two re recently. That you know it kind of just like had that good kind of Christmassy holiday vibe. And this one is though about Mila Kunis and her, her friends characters, and they're all friends because they're all the kids go to the same school. I said this one is Bad Mom's Christmas, but they basically, though, their mothers are kind of coming into town, and they're coming for Christmas, and Mila Kunis' mother is, like, really controlling and trying to put on this huge Christmas party, and Mila Kunis is like, well, I, I'm just going to do this the way I want to do this, and, like, um, the... Um, Catherine uh, Hahn's character, her mother is like an alcoholic and she's kind of like sleeping around with all these random men and like she's kind of trying to like keep her, you know, doesn't think she's a good influence on her son even though she doesn't act that great around her son either and it's kind of like all the moms and they all have kind of problems, the, the kids have, you know, the, 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 the kids are older kids, whatever you'd say, however you put it, you know, their moms are around and they're having problems with their mothers and it's kind of like this whole big to-do problem Christmas situation going on but I, like I said, I honestly had a whole lot more fun with this one because the last movie, it had this vibe of just trying to be kind of over the top and kind of like dirty for like in some points it had like it felt like it had no point to being so like dirty in some of the scenes and stuff like that this one actually did, like it fit more and it kind of and it was more fun like and I kind of hope they do a you know bad grandmas you know a sequel to this one of them because like there's it's sort of set up that there could be but this one has on here though a gag reel additional scenes a crew music video and trailers on this one 
The next ones here are from Gravitas Ventures. And this one, I was really interested in seeing this. And this one is called the Dahl. And this stars the Ukrainian uh, model who's kind of known for looking like the human Barbie or human doll. And she's like acting in this one. And it's basically about these two guys and the one guy's girlfriend just broke up with him. And um, they end up like kind of coming up with this idea to kind of make her jealous and stuff. And they on online, they find this uh, mail order bride. And it's this one that looks just like a doll. And they're like, oh, we should, you know, rent her for and have her come to the house for a week. And maybe her girlfriend will come by and get jealous and stuff. And they have her come by. And it's like, you know, she did an amazing job, too, doing this, like, lifeless kind of doll expression and stuff. But as soon as she comes by, though, she kind of is, like, you know, doesn't say much of anything. And, um, like, people are getting killed off. Like, Ron Jeremy is in here in a cameo. It's a great cameo. And then Mindy Robinson, who's been lot, lots of, really, you know, indie horror movies and stuff, she's in here. But it's pretty much, though, like, about, you know, this doll is killing people in these crazy, weird ways, like karate chopping in the throat and the, the chest and stuff. And they're getting killed and you don't know exactly what's going on she's like drawing pentagrams on her hand and everything and these guys are kind of clueless about everything i don't know it's it a really fun aspect to this movie that i really liked and I, I don't know it's not perfect like technically everything isn't perfect with some of it like so, like the sound in one part you like hear the microphone and stuff but uh, as a film though i i really honestly thought this was a really fun movie i think you guys if you like like these kind of um there's one or two other movies that were sort of like doll kind of movies but like this is she isn't really a doll though in this but she kind of acts like a doll and there's like a reason why she's doing these killings and stuff and she has all these things planned but i don't know i this is honestly a really fun movie it's a really strange movie but really got into this and the next one here from gravitas ventures as well and i just finished looking at this one it's a movie called alpha gateway and this is about this um one who's a scientist who's like inventing, working on inventing this machine where you can like a, kind of a teleportation top pod where it's supposed to go from one pod to the other, kind of like in the movie The Fly. But like they, you know, put the apple through it to test it out. The apple goes missing. They don't know where it is. And they come to find out that it's actually sending the apple and what they send through to another dimension. And in the beginning of this movie, the woman's husband ends up dying and, you know, getting hit by a car when he's riding his bike. And she's like really depressed about this. And she's like, well, if I, this machine can go to another dimension, maybe I can go to the other dimension and find another version of my husband. And so she goes through the machine. And right when she goes through, she finds, you know, her husband but it's another dimension version of him and he finds you know but then the husband's there like well, I, well how are you here you you died and in the other dimension she got hit by a car when she's riding a bike but she convinces him to kind of come back to you know see the kids even though in that dimension that he didn't have kids so it was a really interesting kind of movie but you know that's all i want to say is like once you know he comes over though it sort of becomes a situation and there's like a lot of things different about this husband from the other dimension but when it comes to these kind of like um alternate reality kind of sliders type things this was one of the more interesting ones in a really long time because there's been a couple other sort of similar like other dimension kind of films you know but this one was actually kind of interesting and actually had some really different kind of stuff to this one the next one from gravitas ventures is well is one called don't f in the woods and the thing that's pretty fun about this movie is i actually have like a voice cameo in this movie because there's a scene when the one uh the brother who i am calls the sister trying to get money so it's me on the phone like you know talking for money and stuff so kind of a cool thing in this but it's a basically though a uh, about you know this creature that lives out in the middle of the woods and anyone who's out there having sex in the woods this creature goes and kills them and it's like crazy deaths and it's actually a pretty cool you know creature suit that they have like an old school kind of like a creature from the black lagoon mixed with like um the uh ghoulies like the, the big ghoulie creature from the ghoulies too kind of has that sort of look to it but it's basically about a group of these friends all going out you know camping and they all don't really know what they're doing and the, the one guy's kind of bumbling and messing around and stuff but it's essentially about them going out there and then like other people who are out in the woods randomly you see getting killed off because they're sleeping with each other out in the woods but and it's like really crazy over the top kind of you know deaths and stuff in this and if you guys like you know creature in the woods kind of slasher type movies you know with an old school kind of 80s vibe definitely check this out very very fun movie uh the next one from gravitas ventures as well is a movie here called uh relentless it's about this woman who um, is like works at a, at a coffee kind of place, and it's kind of about um, her daughter is going went to um, I think it was um, 
in uh, Ecuador, and the daughter, you know, they she's often quite often there, the woman who runs this coffee store quite often goes to Ecuador too to kind of look at the coffee beans and stuff like that. But her daughter's there on an assignment for school, and what ends up happening though is the daughter ends up getting kidnapped by this sex trafficking group because there's a lot of that stuff going on, and it talks about this and kind of the stuff in the past there that had happened. But it's essentially though about when this the mother finds out about this, she, it's her going there and then trying to track her down and figure out exactly you know follow kind of the clues of everything and figure out exactly you know where she was taken and where she could be so it's a huge to do and it's all filmed I, th I think there was a majority of this filmed in um you know, Ecuador and Central America, and it's like really, really great settings and stuff. I'm pretty sure a, like a decent amount of it was. It really did look like it was, but a really pretty good like thriller kind of film, like I said, about her trying to track down her daughter and figure out exactly who these people were that took her and where exactly she is and everything. It's a, a pretty decent movie here. Uh, the next one here from the Warner Archive, and this is one I was so excited, you know, when this one, I heard this one was getting released, and I would mention too, this one is the unrated cut, so those who are curious about this, this is the unrated version of the film and this is Leatherface the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and I had not watched this one back in a long time but it has all the features though from the past uh, DVD release the commentary track the making of on here deleted scenes alternate ending but it's basically though about this couple who are going driving through Texas and they end up, um, you know, of course, going through this gas station and they end up coming across Vigo Morgenstern's character who says to the one woman, and there's like a real creepy, weird guy that works at the gas station. And they're kind of both in cahoots, Vigo Morgenstern and the guy, but the group there, those two don't know this, that they're working together. But he's like, oh, you know, if you're driving through this area, you should take this road. It's a much quicker road. You'll get there much faster. And of course, though, that road would lead to where the Leatherface's house is. And it's pretty much about them, you know, going out there and then it's like you know dealing with Leatherface and Leatherface coming after them and Ken Foray stars this movie as well always a huge fan of Ken Foray and he's like a kind of like a doomsday prepper kind of guy who's all like always has lots of weapons and everything it's kind of him along with this couple out there trying to fight off Leatherface um, you know Ken Foray though totally steals the show in this movie he's like really really great in this movie but a really actually pretty good uh, sequel to the, the film I don't know exactly what point you'd say this one takes place because it's sort of like kind of disconnects like counts part two in a weird way a little bit but I sort of it does, sort of does but I actually really like this one a lot and like I said I had not watched this one before this for years so I kind of forgot how cool this one was the next ones here are from um, Nickelodeon and Paramount this is season three and season four of the Rugrats, and these ones are now finally available. They were originally available as like the burn on demand releases in the past, but these are now you know um, you know the actual in store releases, and I believe these should be in like Walmart's and and all kinds of other places as well. Of course, you can get them online. And this you know this is one of those shows. It's hard to believe. I did this show started in 1991. So I was watching the show when I was like six years old. And like, but this show, like season four though, there was a big gap of like a whole year between, I think maybe even a, a little over, like a, at least a full year of production between these seasons. But this show, if you guys don't know, have never seen the show at all. You know, it's one of those things, if you grew up watching it as a kid, I think you probably like it a little more, or if you have kids. But it's pretty much about these babies who go on adventures and Tommy Pickles and Chucky and Phil and Lil and then, Angelica, who's Tommy's cousin, and they kind of go on adventures and kind of get into all kinds of mischief and problems and everything. Uh, season four, though, has a great episode with Vacation, when they go to Vegas, and it's kind of like an alternate reality version of Vegas. But there's some really, really good episodes on here. But, you know, I'm really glad these ones now are finally available and, like, these, you know, uh, not the manufacturer under man releases of these ones. But a really, really fun show. Like I said, I want to let you guys know these are available. And this one, a couple of people have asked me about this one. And this is the Hey Arnold. This is from Nickelodeon as well. This is Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie. And this is, you know, the new Hey Arnold film. And because Hey Arnold ended in 2004, I think it sort of ended in 2002, but then it had, like, a couple, like, special episodes and stuff. But, um... And uh, Hey Arnold was another one that I watched. I think it was probably like a, like nine or something, five, something like that when it first started. So I remember really watching it all the time. And like I didn't see a lot of the later ones, like some of the ones in like 2001 and 2002. But this is, you know, pretty much, you know, 
a good majority of the voice actors came back like the same actors who did Helga's voice and a few other ones. Arnold was different though because like I don't think the guy could do the voice anymore. But this is pretty much though, you know, the big thing in Hey Arnold, was, the show was you don't know what happened to Hey Arnold's parents and you don't know where they were. You know, they kind of went missing. And this is now about um, Arnold who is like, you know, for school is going to... Um, the rainforest to you know help out there and stuff and it turns out that was where his parents had gone missing so it's kind of him out there on a journey with the school kids all the kids back together on the school trip to try and him you know he's there they're supposed to be on this trip but he's there to track down his parents there's all kinds of problems that happen along the way and stuff i won't lie though it was kind of like i, sh I shed a tear a little bit to this it was a little Diff weird sort of seeing this now though it's gonna I feel like it's gonna be the same way seeing the new Rocco movie when that comes out because like when you watch these things as a kid you have like a real connection to seeing it as a kid so seeing a new episode or a new film of this now because it's 80 minutes long now it's very different it's a really interesting kind of thing seeing a new, whole new one now of something that you kind of watch when you were a kid so but honestly though I think too they, they kind of hope that they might do a like another season of the show which I don't know uh, but I'm really excited too to see what they do with the Rocco movie the next one here from Severn is a movie that was a TV movie from the UK from 1984 called Threads. And it's all about the post-apocalyptic kind of like um, a nuclear war. And it kind of, uh, you know, about like kind of like what could happen. And it's done like documentary style. And it's like, and it's basically though, you know, it says like eats the day and the date and stuff. And you kind of know that there may be this war with Iran with like, you know, with, um, you know, a pocket, you know, dealing with like radiation and stuff. And it's pretty much though going through and like showing the whole process of like the beginning of what you, you know, what, and it shows like this family and stuff about like when they first hear the potential idea that this could happen. And then throughout the whole thing, about as it's going on and it kind of leads on to like the panic and the buying up the food and then it goes through as it happens and like what happens to the people and it's like really really it's really some crazy stuff it's some very very creepy movie it really is and i remember too hearing about this a little bit in the past i never had seen it before but it has a commentary track on here it has some interviews on here with the actress and thing on here talking about the director of photography about shooting this one but a really pretty interesting post-apocalyptic kind of but done very very serious and like like a like i said a documentary style and the last one here is from mondo macabre and this one, Bracabro, is a movie called The Blood Splattered Bride. And this is a pretty interesting one um, it's from 1972. It's about this um, man who marries this woman. And, um, you know, they waited till they were married to sleep together. And he, you know, as soon as they're married, though, he's, like, really all over her. And he's, like, kind of, like kind of like a total fiend and they you know end up going back to this kind of castle big kind of house that they live at and it's a very weird place like there's no pictures of women on the wall it's all these men and everybody in there is kind of strange and stuff and the one the wife you know is kind of constantly being pestered by this man to sleep with her sleep with him and like he's like really kind of all over and being really kind of strange and stuff the way he's sort of acting and it's pretty much though he starts she starts seeing this like figure of this woman walking around and it, like you come to find out that this woman was like something that something had happened to her year you know 300 years before and stuff and you find out why the pic pictures of women are missing on the wall and and why they're hidden in the basement it's a pretty interesting like you know horror movie like i said i never saw this one before but some but like um some people kind of relate it to that movie Valerie and her Week of Wonders. Like when I was reading one thing, somebody said it has a similar vibe, and it sort of does have that kind of vibe to this one. But it has a brand new transfer on here. It has a version of the film in English and Spanish. It has um, new English, you know, English subtitles and new English subtitles on the Spanish version. It has an interview on here with the cinematographer, a two-part interview with one of the actors on here, deleted and alternate scenes. But a pretty interesting movie here. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching, subscribing. I'll See you guys later.